Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. Welcome back to Class of Friday, where we look at a G.I. Joe Classified Series figure every Friday. This time we are looking at G.I. Joe Classified Arctic Mission Storm Shadow. This figure was exclusive to Amazon and I ordered it when it was first available. Let's take a look at the box. The box has the window pane that shows the figure and the accessories. We have the logo. It says G.I. Joe Classified Series Arctic Mission Storm Shadow. There's some artwork of Storm Shadow here. The art artwork does not have the snow effect that's on the figure, but it does have this swirl effect that is not on the figure. The artwork continues to the side of the box with more of those swirl effects. It's more of a texture than a detail. This artwork is acceptable. It's not the best I've seen, but it's okay. This is number 14 in the series, and on the back of the box we have the generic poster artwork we've seen on other G.I. Joe classified series figures. On the other side of the box we have these symbols, and the box does indicate Storm Shadow is a Cobra character. In the G.I. Joe comic book and the Deke era of the animated series, Storm Shadow became a G.I. Joe team member. There are these four symbols that represent Storm Shadow's specialties. Uh, these, what exactly do these mean? According to G.I. Joe.com, this one means Covert Ops Level 4, this one means Bladed Weapons Level 3, this one means Infiltration Level 3, and this one means Ninjutsu Level 4. I am not a fan of this. You should not have to go to a website to learn what these symbols mean and what this character does. Now, I understand this is supposed to be a bit of fun, just some fun interactivity between the website and the toys, but honestly, how many people are going to look these up? And if you don't look them up, they're kind of meaningless. It doesn't even say go to gijoe.com to look them up. The only reference to the website is this tiny icon right here. Let's not get too hung up on that. Let's open the box and take out the figure and take a look at Storm Shadow. Here is Storm Shadow out of the box. This figure is not an update of the original Storm Shadow Shadow action figure from 1984. This figure is a reference to Storm Shadow version 3 from 1992, which was part of the Ninja Force subset. As you can see, the colors and some of the details have been copied over from that 1992 figure. Now, the 1992 Storm Shadow was a member of the G.I. Joe team, but this classified Storm Shadow is still with Cobra. Storm Shadow included a plethora of accessories, such as this bow in gold and black. It doesn't have a bowstring, but that's okay. A bowstring at this scale would be very thin and probably prone to breakage. It does fit in the action figure's hand, but it's very hard to get in and out of the hand due to how tight that fit is in the fist. Along with that bow, there was an arrow, this arrow in white plastic. It is very small. It's kind of dangerous to take out of the package. This is one that'll be easy to get lost. I guess you can get some decent poses with the bow and arrow, so that's nice. There is a quiver of arrows on the backpack, but this extra arrow does not fit on the backpack anywhere and it doesn't match the arrows that are on the backpack. It doesn't match the length or the color or the style or the detail. This arrow just doesn't fit anywhere. Given how small this arrow is and that there's nowhere to store it, unless you are posing the action figure with the arrow, you're probably going to leave this in the packaging. Storm Shadow includes a sickle and this is a callback to an accessory on that 1992 Storm Shadow. The 1992 Storm Shadow accessory and the classified accessory are almost the same size, despite the fact that they were made for figures of different scales. No storage spot for this sickle, so if it's not in Stormy's hand, then it's probably got to be left in the box. He has another loose accessory. He has this white grapple hook with a long black line wrapped around the handle, and this is a fine accessory. It gives more options for posing the figure, but where is he going to keep it when he's not using it? I'll just unwrap that line so you can see how long it is. Nothing attaches to the other end. It's just a long black line. And there it is all unraveled so you can get an idea of the length. Finally, let's get to what are probably the most important accessories on this figure. He has a backpack with a sword and a sheath. Those are removable. They peg onto the back of the action figure with this peg. The backpack is in black plastic. It has a gold Arashikage hexagram on it and gold arrows. These arrows are not removable, but the sheath for the sword is. It pegs onto the backpack. That sheath is in white plastic. It has a peg for pegging onto the backpack, and it has a crisscross pattern on it. In the sheath, there is a sword that can be removed. The sword has a white handle and a silver painted blade. There is an Arashikage hexagram at the base of the blade on both sides. That silver paint on the blade can scrape
sweep off and there's already a scuff on mine. The sword, the sheath, and the backpack are actually pretty good and I like how they all fit together. This kind of reminds me of the backpack for Storm Shadow version 1. Let's take a look at Storm Shadow's articulation. He has good range of motion on the head. I guess sort of hindered by this hood, but the hood kind of moves with it. It's kind of loose. You can remove this hood if you pop the head off first, but I'm not going to bother with that. He has butterfly joints at the shoulders that work better than on some figures. He has some upward movement on the shoulders, but that is hindered by these armored shoulder plates. Swivel all the way around at the shoulder and a twist at the bicep. He has double jointed elbows and he has twists at both wrists. Doesn't look like he has hinged wrists at either wrist. I take that back. There is a hinge on the right wrist. It's just really tight. He has a hinge at the rib cage for an ab crunch and it actually ratchets a little bit. You hear that plastic clicking? Unfortunately, it's also a little loose. He has a twist at the torso. He's wearing this belt piece, but that does not really get in the way. It seems to move with the torso. He can still get a good leg split and move his leg forward pretty well. There's no real hindrance. This is a softer plastic, so that doesn't really get in the way. He has a twist at the thigh cut, double jointed knees. It doesn't look like there's any boot cut, but he does have hinged and rocker ankles. There's actually less articulation on this figure than on most classified figures, there's usually a cut right about here with an extra point of articulation there. There is no obvious break in the sculpting to put that cut on this figure, so that's probably why they didn't do it. Looking at the figure itself, he has a white hood over a black balaclava mask. You can see his eyes behind the mask looking very menacing. This hood could be removed. That's a loose piece. If you pop the head off, you could take that off as well, but I prefer to leave it on. It looks more like that 92 Storm Shadow with that hood on. There is white armor plate on the upper chest and on the back with some nice extra paint applications on there. There's gold on the back and on the shoulders and on the chest there is a gold Arashikage hexagram. Below that white chest armor there is a black uniform. Looks like black armor and on that black there is white icicles and snow. At least that's what it looks like. This is a direct callback to that 1992 figure that had similar details on his chest and arms and legs. Those details are not on the legs of the classified figure, but it's still nice to see those details on the chest and on the arms. The arms have white shoulder armor and black sleeves and black gloves, and then the white paint applications on the upper arms on the black plastic, right where the black meets the white shoulders. Around his waist, he's wearing this white plastic belt piece with panels that look like it's supposed to be white cloth, but of course that's white plastic on the front and the back looks sort of reminiscent of samurai armor. It has some pouches as well and a gold belt buckle. This piece has been used elsewhere for one of the Snake Eyes movie Storm Shadow figures. These were in a smaller scale. This piece is the same size despite the fact that the figure is in a smaller scale, although some of the textures and detail are missing on this cheaper version of a Storm Shadow figure. He has black uniform legs, no paint applications on those legs. Legs. They're kind of obscured by this belt piece, but it looks okay. He has white armor knee pads, and he has white panels and straps on his lower legs. He has black down the middle, and he has black and white ninja shoes. Just for the heck of it, since I had it out, I wanted to put this movie Storm Shadow next to the classified Storm Shadow. Now, the Snake Eyes movie Storm Shadow is in a smaller scale. It is almost at classified scale, but it is very slightly shorter. It also has less articulation. What it does share with Classified Storm Shadow is accessories. It has the same backpack as Classified Storm Shadow, just in different colors. This backpack in silvery gray and black will peg on to the Classified figure, so you could use it for that figure if you prefer it. This backpack has a hole in it, and that's for these double sword sheaths that can peg onto that backpack. These swords can be removed. They are in silver plastic. They are significantly smaller than the Classified swords. The classified sword sheath will peg onto that backpack, so again, another alternative for your classified Storm Shadow. The coolest part is the movie figure has a bow in white plastic, and it has a bowstring, and this should fit in classified Storm Shadow's hand. Indeed, it does fit, so there are even more options for alternate accessories for your classified Storm Shadow. There are some problems with this figure, especially with some of the accessories, but overall, I do like this Storm Shadow figure. This is a callback to a relative 
relatively obscure version of Storm Shadow that a lot of people might not know about, and as a fan, I appreciate that. That was my review of G.I. Joe Classified Series Arctic Mission Storm Shadow. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I am reviewing G.I. Joe Classified figures every Friday. I also review vintage G.I. Joe toys every Sunday, so check back for that. You can find me on social media, on Facebook and Twitter, and I have a website, hcc788.com. Please support the channel on Patreon so I can continue doing these videos. You can get your name in videos. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. And until then, remember, only G.I. Joe is G.I. Joe.